Hi guys, we're going to be working on 10.1 volume of rectangular prisms that starts on page 739. So please make sure you're open to that page and ready to work. The first thing that we come to is it asks you to scan the lesson and predict two things that you will learn about finding the volume of rectangular prisms. And I know today in class we talked about a lot of things um, with rectangular prisms, so maybe you can use some of those or just, um, you know, the is it fan through the pages? I don't know what it's called. Scan through, sorry, scan through the pages and see what you find. Pause the video now and come right back. All right, there are a couple different things you could have said. Maybe you use the new formula, um, volume equals big B times height. Um, maybe you talked about that it's a, a three-dimensional figure. Um, Lots of different things that we're going to be going on with through the uh, volume of rectangular prisms. I know that we're going to be working on a missing dimension section um, where maybe they haven't told us what the height is or what the area of the base is. So we'll go from there. All right, let's get started. So we have vocabulary startup, and they want us to define what volume is and when would you use volume and then give an example and a non-example. So go ahead and pause the video again for just a second and answer those questions. And when you come back, we'll show my answers. All right, guys, it's starting to pour down rain outside, so if you hear something crazy in the background, um, just know that there's a typhoon going on outside, and um, if this was Wizard of Oz, I might be uh, swept away. Thanks. So this might be my last recording. Just kidding, guys. It's okay. Um, so defining the volume, I said that it's space inside a 3D shape, um, maybe done in cubic units. When would you use volume? I'd say like filling up box or maybe filling up the fish tank or something like that when you need to know the space inside something. And my example would be like 12 inches cubed, um, maybe something like a cereal box. And then um, a non-example would be something like 12 inches or 12 inches squared, um, a tile or a piece of rope, something like that. Uh, the real world link, it says the dimensions of an aquarium are shown. So it looks like the kitty wants to eat the fishy. So let's go ahead and draw a picture. I think we've done this before of a sad fish that ate. Well, okay, I thought that looked like a fish when I first drew it, but maybe I'm wrong. Now it looks like a bow tie. All right, anyway, so the cat ate the fish, so he's gone. And the area of the base of the aquarium would be this section down here. So we would use the area formula for big B where we do um, base times height and that would be uh, 3 times 2 which is 6 feet squared. Then the height would be 2 feet and so if I filled in for my length, my width, and my height I'd end up with 6 times 2 which is my area times the height and that's kind of what we're going towards here. So it would be 12 feet cubed. All right, so when we're talking about the volume of rectangular prism, the volume of rectangular prism is a product of its length times width times height. But as I talked about in class today, I really want us to be the big kids now and think of it more like this formula where it's big B times height, where the big B is the area of the base. Okay, so big B is area of the base. And so here's just some uh, vocabulary background. It says that a three-dimensional figure has length, width, and height. Um, you know, when you're talking about 3D, it's something that um, isn't flat, right? Um, a prism is a three-dimensional figure with two parallel bases that are congruent polygons. A rectangular prism means that the bases are congruent rectangles. And remember that the word congruent means the same. Okay? So we think of it as our top and our bottom, but it's our two congruent rectangles in this case. The volume is the amount of space inside a three-dimensional figure. Oh my gosh, I'm so smart. That's totally what I said. It is measured in cubic units, which can be written using the abbreviations and exponent of three. So it would be like units cubed or inches cubed. Instead of saying, um, you know, cubic inches, 
we would just say inches cubed. Just like with square inches, we'd say inches squared. Decomposing the prism tells you the number of cubes of a given size it will take to fill the prism. The volume of a rectangular prism is related to its dimensions, length, width, and height. So that's the elementary way of doing it. We're going to now talk about finding the area of the base and then multiplying that times the height. All right, so it says another method to decompose a rectangular prism is find the area of the base and multiply it by the height. Woo, weird. It's like I'm psychic or something. Um, so the area of the base is our B, and then the height is the number of rows or levels. Remember, I kind of used the word levels, um, that this would be my first level, and then how many more levels I'm going to multiply that base by. So cubes are a special rectangular prism because all three sides are equal. So the volume of the cube can be written as side cubed. So just like the area of um, a square could be side times side or side squared, when we're talking about a 3D shape of the same thing, we're now saying, well, this side is also S, and so now it's going to be side cubed. So it says find the volume of a rectangular prism. B, or the area of the base, is 10 times 12. So that's 12, or 120 square centimeters. The height of the prism is 6 centimeters, and so we would take the base, the big B, the area of the base, which was 120, and we're going to multiply it times the height. So we found the area of this first level, and then we're multiplying it times 6 to tell us what the entire volume is of this box. So that would be 120 times 6, which is 720 cubic centimeters, or 720 centimeters cubed. You're going to do A and B on your own. Notice that A is our, our square, okay, square rectangular prism, um, and B is our rectangular prism normal. So go ahead and do A and B and come back and we'll check our answers together. Pause the video now. Alright, check out my answers. Notice that I found um, the area of the big B um, for each one first, and then I plugged it into the original volume equals big base times height. Um, please use your, use your OSS. I want to see this. I want to see the split screen that I told you about today in class, and I want to see you work out the area of the base and then plug that into the original equation and solve the whole thing. So, And I want to see um, cubic units as well. So check my work, see where I went with it, see if you can figure out where you maybe went wrong, or if not, let's move on. So decomposing figures, you can think of the volume of the prism as consisting of six congruent slices, or like I was saying, levels, okay? And that each level contains the area of the base, which is 120 centimeters squared, but we're going to multiply it by the height of one centimeter. So we'd have the base times one centimeter, and we would end up with 120 centimeters cubed now. And so if we had each of those levels, we just have to multiply how many levels we have times this 120 to be able to get to that point, which I think this is going back and reflecting the one where it was six high, and so that was 720 centimeters cubed. So one level was 120 centimeters cubed, six levels added all together, was going to be the 120 plus 120 plus 120, which we're not going to do that. We're going to multiply times 6. All right, so that's 720 centimeters cubed. So number 2 says the cereal box has the dimensions shown. What is the volume of the cereal box? So, of course, they went back to length times width times height. Um, I'm not on board. I'm just not. I'm doing my base and my, um, my big base. So this is where I'm going to go ahead and go. I'm going to work out my work separately, and I'd like you, for you to do it as well. And I know that we've got fractions. Boo-hoo for us, but we'll get over it. All right. So um, volume, I'm just going to try and write over theirs. Because I don't know how to add my own. Let me see if I can figure something out. Hold on. Nope, couldn't figure it out. All right. So we're going to have big base times height. Then I'm going to do my little um, cut down the side, split screen deal here. And I'm going to find the big base which is the area of a rectangle base times height. And we have the um, base is 8 inches, 
because if I'm looking at my base down here, it's almost like I'm getting x-ray vision. This is 8 inches, because this down here goes there, and it's 8 inches by 3 and 1 fourth. So it's going to be 8 inches times 3 and 1 fourth. Of course, to be able to multiply, I need to make those into um, improper fractions. So that's going to be 8 over 1 times 13 fourths. Cross simplify, get my 2 here, that ends up being, and then the 1 here, that'll be 26 over 1, which is 26. So for my big base, I'm putting in 26. Then I'm going to multiply that times 12 and 1 half, um, where again, I'm going to, you know, at this point, I really could just make it 0.5, right? But we'll go with it. Times 25 over 1, oops, oh, sorry, over 2. <laughs> I'm so wrapped up in wanting to do 0.5. All right, and then I'm going to cross simplify. This will be 1. This will be 13. And so now I'm going to do 13 times 25. I hope that you're working with me instead of just watching and copying. And so in the end, we have 325 inches cubed. Ta-da! And I did it the same thing. I just chose to do the big base and then do big base times height because find the area of the base. And I know that it's not ideal, but I don't think it's any more ideal to have to, you know, have a bunch of fractions going at the same time either. So I don't think it's that big a deal. So I hope that you follow along with me and you're doing big base, please. All right. So now they're not even going to ask the picture. You're welcome to draw it if you'd like, but it says that we have the find the volume of a container that measures, um, and it'd be really nice if they said a rectangular prism, uh, four inches long, five inches high, and eight and one half inches wide. So, because it's a rectangular prism, it's kind of okay that they haven't given us the actual picture because we know that we can make any two sets our base, let's call this our base, and then this is our height. Um, it really doesn't matter. Ultimately, we're just going to multiply everything. So go ahead and set it up however you'd like, and I'll come back with the final answer. All right, this again was not the most ideal situation with that one half in there, but life throws you, you know, fractions, and you've got to go with it. Um, in retrospect, you know, I could have done a lot of different things. I could have said, okay, this is my ba my little base, this is my little height, and so when I find the area of base times height, um, I can make it uh, 4 times 8 and 1 half. And then when I went back to my original formula, I'd plug this part in, and then my height would have been 5. Okay? Uh, lots of different ways to go about it, but your final answer should be the 170 inches cubed either way. All right. Next. So now we're going to talk about finding dimensions that are missing. To find missing dimensions of a rectangular prism, replace the variables with known measurements, then solve the unknown measurement. So we're still going to use that same formula, um, just sometimes we're not going to know all the parts to it. All right, so again, I'm using volume equals big B times height. Okay, and they're telling us that they're giving us the volume, which is 84. Um, they gave us the information we need for finding the big base, because that would be um, base times height, which I'm going to use this information down here. So it'll be 6 times 4, which is 24. So I'll know that that's going to be 24. But then they're not giving us the height, so I'm going to make that times h, because that's the thing that they did not give us. So now I'm going to do a t-chart. And I know I need to divide by 24, divide by 24, this is gone, I end up having height equals, it's just that one step equation, but unfortunately we've got 84 um, divided by 24, so you can go 84 divided by 24, and um, let's see, it's going to be 3 times, that's times 12, 72 with a remainder of 12, add a decimal, Oops, add a decimal and, oops, sorry, add a decimal and a zero, bring your decimal straight up, drop that zero down, and we would say, okay, 24 goes into 125 times, that's 20, carry the 2 and then 12. All right, and so zero. So we've got 3.5 is our answer to our height. And, of course, check our work. We can plug in 
the 3.5 and um, multiply that times 24 or multiply that times 6 and times 4 and you'll get the 84 if you're correct. Alright, so I'd like for you to do um, D on your own. Now the way that they've given it to you, you can use that length times width times height formula since that's exactly how they're giving it to you. Um, otherwise I think it's going to make it more complicated. So go ahead and use the elementary school length times width times height. Okay? When you come back, uh, we'll go over the answer. Just something I noticed, I did forget to write in what the units were for this. My bad. Oops, sorry. Ugh. My bad. So we've got um, meters. Sorry, the custodian just scared me by pounding on my door. So, sorry I jumped. Um, so it's 3.5 meters is the height. Okay, so back to D. Um, I did it two different ways just because I wanted to see how it would work out. Um, but we've got um, 45, where's the units? 45 kilometers is our answer. Um, you could do it with length times width times height and plug in what they told you, combine 7 times 3, or you could do it with big B times height and find the same answer, which is the example over here. All right, so that ends our, um, our section, our lesson on volume of rectangular prisms. We're going to go over a lot more examples in class, um, finish up that worksheet that I handed out today, and, um, and just go over some more examples. So I'll see you in school.